in the Shetland Islands, first thing, it's summer, and the first thing that went was our our shorts and our t-shirts and we're in our polar fleeces and in our coats because it's summertime and um, we've come here to explore the beauty of this place which looks quite fascinating and also to do a little bit of family history um, following in the footsteps of my great-grandfather Andrew Arthur Sanderson. <laughs> and we're here with um, <laughs> Bill and Anne, Kathy's uh, cousin to explore the big uh, city, country, <laughs> island. What city? <laughs> island of uh, Shetland, and we're going to the, the city of Lewick first. So, it should be good. Should be good. We have sunglasses ready. Yes, the sun is almost. Oh, no, I can see the sun. Yeah, it's actually shining. Oh, it's the moon. Possibly. We're staying at an old croft house that's been turned into a B and b over there on the side of the lake. And here's your classical Shetland scenery. Hardly a tree on the whole uh, set of islands. Old houses. Very unique. And down there is a church with a very interesting history. Apparently, uh, the uh, the builder, he had, was told in a dream to give this land for a church, and then what happened? And then every evening when the builders, according to this folklore, the builders used up all their stone, and then in the morning when they'd wake up, there'd be a whole lot of new stone waiting for them. So they felt that it was a very special place, and they said people would come here and the sick would be cured, and they'd light candles and put money around it and things like that. Sort of like Moses <laughs> in the wilderness, isn't it? Yeah, a bit like that. And the big uh, town in uh, Shetland is called Lurwick. Going to have a look around the town. This is the museum where they reckon it's a good place to start to find out about the Shetland Islands. There are about a hundred islands in the Shetlands, but only about uh, 50 of them are inhabited. We're hoping to go up there to Yell, and then North Mavine is where the family came from. We're staying over here by number 27. And there is Lerwick, the main town, and the airport right down at the bottom. This is a typical old, what they used to call the butt and bang, which was uh, an old Shetland house. You had the butt, which was the main living area, and then you had the bang, which was a little tiny room, and everybody used to sleep in what they called box beds, and they were like boxes, and they had a door on them, and they used to shut the door on them to keep them warm inside, and in places you would sometimes find five or six children all sleeping in the same bed just to keep warm during the winter months. But and bend. Mm. Bend. But. Bend. But, but and, and bend. bend. Yeah. Now the box beds themselves were really strange. They were very small. The houses were small. To save room, what they used to do, they used to sleep sitting up. They didn't have the room to lay down. And when you got the children in there, that was okay, because the children used to lay head to toe. But the adults, because they were so small, used to shut the door and they would literally sit and go to sleep sitting up. Lurwick's a lovely little port. We've certainly struck it right with the weather today. It's not like this very often. And in the distance there, you can see the typical farms with no trees and just isolated houses. Well, I've just been to the Shetland Family History Society's building and ran, ran through some of my papers with the lady there. And um, it seems I really need to go to North Mavine to the museum there. They don't have any record of burials for Sandersons or Porteuses or Tullocks or Inksters. Um, but they will have information about where we might be able to find 
the graveyards, but she gave me, um, ran, ran through the information and clarified a few things. So the story continues. Yeah. Who knows whether we'll get to that somewhere or not. Apparently there's not much at North Mavine. This site goes back to the Bronze Age where they um, heated up stones, put them in here so that they could um, uh, adjust the hides and in making the sides for a boat. Here it's sort of like a furnace, getting the hide ready to make the uh, outsides of a boat. And the boat's called a coracle, just a little boat. Yeah, but Ma that would be just half this size. So the longer ones are called currant. Keats, well, the very spellings, whether you're Irish or Scottish. Currant. Currant. Yeah. So three cows make one little boat. Yeah. Ish. Ish. Three cows ish. <laughs> Okay. Three and a half cows by the time we finish. We'll see how we go. And they only um, shear their sheep once a year, so they got a good fleece on them to to see them through the winter. And here we have the raw Shetland life, an island windswept, and an old croft house with its um, stone fences. Pretty tough life living in here. And this would have been their barn to look after the animals. There's a, a beauty that is quite unique to this area. You forget that there's no trees. You look around and you see the undulating hills and the bird life and the sheep and um, it gives you a beautiful sense of well-being. It's a nice place. Now we know that the Shetlands are part of Britain because here we have the essential Britain. Have a chip. Have a chip, he says. Fish and chips. Fish and chips. Haddock, I gather. Yep. yep. Fish and chips there in the go, UK. And now we're in a disused and abandoned church right out in the middle of the countryside and up there's the pulpit. Sad that um, so much energy and love and dedication has gone into this place and then it's all been abandoned. Here are the old pews. There must be absolutely thousands of buildings like this abandoned and disused throughout the Shetland Islands reflecting a past generation. And here we have something that Shetland is very famous for Shetland ponies. Look there's a whole uh, bunch of them here. And they're quite inquisitive. They come over and want to say hello. He's a bit mangy, <laughs> but I suppose it needs a lot of stuff on him for uh, keeping warm in all this wind and cold here. The main form of heating on Shetland is peat, and you can see here they uh, cut the peat out of the ground and then they put it into mounds to let it to dry before they burn it for fuel. And we're being checked out by one of the locals. We're in Sulham now and it's a lovely summer day again. Um, Sulham is on the east coast of North Maven and this is um, probably where the Inkster family lived. Catherine Inkster being the mother of Andrew Arthur Sanderson and she married John Sanderson and the Inkster family lived in this area and um, poor Catherine died in childbirth with their third child so she didn't live to a very old age but this is definitely where her family it was situated and she grew up quite wild. 
once again there's a little house and then it'll have the barns attached. We're now on the west coast and this place is called Ennisfith and this is where Andrew Arthur Sanderson, my great grandfather, was born. And he was uh, he had one sister and both his parents lived here. His mother was Catherine Angster that we saw where she came from just in Salem and John um, Sanderson, his father. And they lived here for many years actually and um, when Andrew went off to Australia and ultimately New Zealand Jemima and John stayed here. Catherine died in childbirth. They stayed here and died here in Innisfirth. Well, we're about as far east as we can go in the Shetlands and I think we've found out as much as we're going to about the Sandersons and the Inksters and the rest of the family. What we have managed to find is uh, to get an overall view of the kind of life they would have lived. It would have been very rugged, very cold, because this is summer. And um, I can see possibly why they needed to leave the place because there's not actually a lot of prospects in a place like this. So um, I'm glad they did because I wouldn't be here otherwise. <laughs> so it's been a great thing to come to the Shetlands and follow it through. And look at that for some rugged scenery. These are black basalt cliffs. Quite uh, stunning scenery. Well, we've only had a couple of days in uh, the Shetland Islands, but I reckon we've done really well because we've had good weather, which is a bit of a, a, a miracle, and we've been able to see the real essential elements of this place. The wind and the uh, raw environment, the, the wildlife, the beauty, it's been quite fantastic. And we've had a, a good look at uh, parts of the family history, but we haven't actually been able to find anything definitive. But never mind, we have a, a much better idea now of what this place is like. It's a great place to visit, but it is pretty exposed. We're now in Tunbridge and we're standing outside the house of the lovely Vera. Isn't she beautiful? And she's 90 years young and very sprightly. Nothing wrong with her brains. What <laughs> <laughs> <Not> brains? <laughs> Nothing wrong with her sense of humour either. And we're here with Emma, who is Vera's beautiful granddaughter. And Jen, who is Emma's absolutely beautiful friend. They're very good friends and they came to New Zealand to see us. Now, when was that? Uh, August last year. August, August last year, yeah. So, um... Tell us about, your, tell us about your grandmother. Who's grandmother? Me? Yeah. Oh, um, Don't you dare. I, <laughs> I was gonna, there's a lot I can't tell you because she would actually kill me. Oh, really? But aside from all of that, she is lovely. And Not bad for 90. Oh, how lovely. She's beautiful. Yes. And tell us where, where it was you grew up so that we can remember that again. You grew up in Plymouth? Yes. Yeah. So what was your mother's name? Beatrice. Beatrice. And then my father was William. Surname? William. Oh, the last name? Yeah. Penaluna. Penaluna. Isn't that a wonderful wow. name? That's a, that's a short for you, isn't it? And your brothers and sisters. Oh, God, you don't know. Yeah. We just want to... Yeah. Childhood, and they were all squashed into one house. Yes, two rooms. Yeah. Three rooms. And tell us how your mum used to clean the windows. I thought that was classic. Oh, when she sat out on the windowsill, pulled the window up, sat down and pulled it down on her tummy to keep her in. <laughs> and every, three stories up. <laughs> three stories up, and everybody's shouting in pen, get off there. <laughs> so it's been a wonderful time. Thank you very much for coming, you two. They had a, they had a day off work, <laughs> yes. which they seem really unhappy about, <laughs> in the beautiful sunshine in Kent.
It's been wonderful. Yeah, it's been lovely having you in. Bye bye then. Bye bye. bye, -bye. Adios. Adios.